Welcome back and this is part 8. What we're going to do in this episode is to shim up and make sure that the pin and the preload on the bearings is correct. What I've got here is the bearing for the later axle which is for the top pin and I'm going to put that in place just to remind you that this is actually greased. This will give it a nice chance before the oil manages to get to it. I'll quickly run through a few differences in this axle between this and the discovery type. Right, well this top pin actually has an o-ring which fits in a groove. As you can see here it comes in the kit, goes in the groove, but we'll leave that out for now. We don't want to damage that, we'll put that in last thing. Top bearing and bottom bearings are new with the races. And with a kit you also get the shims. This is for both kits. Um, for your swivel pins, okay, you have a selected amount of shims Which might not actually be enough, so don't throw away your old ones. You need a good selection of these Before you start working because you need to be able to get the right amount of shims Between the top of the pin and the body to lift it correctly Right, okay, well, we'll carry on from here Right, so we got our shims from our packet and the first thing we're going to do with these is put them here. I'm no doubt you already know where they fit, okay. Now fitting this you have to be careful with the one with the bearing on it. Take it easy when you push it in, don't damage the bearing. Right. As you push this up, you can see how much space is there, and this has to lift the bottom bearing or the bottom peg, okay? So you get a preload on it. It doesn't look too bad there. And what I need to do is just put my thumb on it and try and move just to see how much play there might be there. It's not a very good way. The best way is actually to put some bolts in and you'll need some short slave bolts, not the longer ones that you get with this top pin, but you've got to make sure that these don't foul the body anywhere. Okay, so you can see the lift on this and it's quite considerable at the moment, up and down lift. I'll nip this up until the lift has gone and this is just to assist me to assess how many more shims I need to put in here right so that feels smooth I'll just nip this up just a little bit more okay so that's feeling nice and smooth a lot of this is to do with how you feel and you want to feel just a slight bit of drag on it so I've got some older shims and what I'm trying to do is gauge how much more I need to pack this out. Okay, so I'm fitting that in the gap there. Okay. This is generally just a rough guide. You could use feeler gauges. However, it seems pointless measuring it as this is just a rough estimate. If you're very lucky, you'll get the right fitting first of all. However, be prepared to take the pin in and out a few times until you actually get the measurement right. And I'll show you how to gauge this later on. If you just cram this pin down with no shims in it, you'll actually smash the bearing. It'd be too tight. So we want to have the right amount of preload on the bearings. Okay, on the other axle, just be aware that the thrust washer might have been stuck on the pin. Don't lose it. Okay, the method is exactly the same. There you go. There's your shims. Whichever axle we're doing, we're looking for exactly the same results. Getting back to our axle with a roller bearing on the top pin. With the extra shims added, I can then put the pin back in and bolt it up. As you see with this one, I've got to lift it a fair way. Before it will mate like this, I'm lifting the bottom bearing up to make contact. So again, putting the bolts in, and this can actually be a little bit tedious. That's why I've chosen the shortest bolts possible that are clean. Okay, so there we have it. We've nipped the shims down, and the housing's still moving. Okay, you need to pull these down to the correct torque, and then feel to see what sort of preload you have on the housing. In fact, this isn't too bad. The first guess, well, it's a bit more than a guess, is not much play on it at all. However, I'm not happy with this. There's too much drag. So again, what I'm gonna do is take out a shim 
and replace it with a thicker one. As I said, you want to make sure you feel happy before you go ahead and put the seal on. The whole idea behind leaving the seal out is because once the seal is on, there will be more drag and it will actually feel stiff. So you just want to measure the preload on this. This can either be done by an educated feel or using a gauge like this, which is recommended by Land Rover. There's a little bit too much drag on this, so I'll put another shim in the top there. Okay, so I've put a slightly thicker shim in here. And I'm going to drop this back on again. Again, we're going to go through the same thing. Bolt it back up and feel how we go with this. As I've alliterated before, the bolts have to be as tight as what they would be when this is going to be running on the road. So you're going to nip them up and then you can feel it. And it can actually be quite dramatic, so cram them up. You can see that, that's as loose as a daisy. That's fine, but they'll have a little bit of sideward play, so, so I'm cramming these up evenly and then having a feel of it, and this is quite smooth actually. The bearings um, are much better than the earlier design where you had a thrust bearing. These seem to roll quite nicely, giving it a feel of the play. To me, there's no sideward movement, there's no lift, and that runs nice and smoothly. So these bearings are already preloaded, and I'm happy with this. That's done quite well. Now, next thing to do is undo it. And then, as you might have guessed, is to put the O-ring in. That'll go along with the ABS sensor holder and the uh, top oil seal. Okay, this relates to earlier axles that either have a thrust bearing in the bottom, i.e. ABS, or you have a pad at the bottom there. Okay, this is all the earlier axles. When you're setting your preload, you want to make sure that you don't have any sideward movement rather than lift and that's just grabbing it and moving it from side to side. It will feel like it's nipped up just a little bit tight and that's how you want it, not excessively. Using a spring balance you probably have found in the kitchen, you want the needle to move as little as possible and there is a setting regarding this. If it's too loose, then take the peg off, take a thin shim out and put it back in. Likewise, if it's too tight, put a thin shim back in. Take your time with this and you just want it so it's just right and you will be able to feel it. The whole issue behind this exercise is to make sure we've got the right space between the two bearings without any play in it. That's why we need to shim up. As long as you get the right amount of shims in there, you'll get the correct preload. Right, so... Just pulling this, you watch the gauge, and I'm holding the body. And if I pull it without my hand on there, it is easy and the needle hardly moves. And that's what you're looking for. I think this one was for actually weighing suitcases, but you can see it'll give me an indication that I have a little bit of resistance, and that's all that's needed. Back to our latest style axle with the bearing on the top. I'm just going to slip an O-ring on here. This is the final time the peg has to come out and I'll roll it on there and there's a groove that it fits into. Now this is just to keep the smeg out and the oil from uh, disappearing as well. So once that's done I can then slip it in and I can nip this up for the last time. If you noticed actually one of the shims is sprung loaded, it's curved and it's supposed to be like that. It keeps everything in place. Anyway, if I position this right, I can drop it in, and this will be the last time this comes out now. So I can bolt it up. The bolts don't need a final torque until we've actually got the top bracket on. So we'll move on next and put the uh, main seal in place. Before I forget, also with the ABS sensor bracket and the seal, you can pop those into the top pin now. So... Don't put the ABS sensor in yet, because you need to put in the CV joint first. And just as an afterthought actually, the uh, seal lip on any of the seals you fit on here really need a little bit of grease on them. So there we go. Pop it back in and we're okay. 
So that's sorted. Next job to do now is to uh, wind off the bolts and I'm going to take this off the axle because as I said before I feel more comfortable fitting the seal and then fitting the ball to the axle so this is what we're going to do and it will be easier for me to show you that way. <laughs> 